Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through the Apley's test for the knee joint. And the principal purpose of this test is to look for a meniscal injury at the knee. But we're also going to explain how you can vary the test to look for ligamentous injury as well. Before we get started on the technique, I just wanted to mention that we're only going to be performing the test on our patient's left leg. And so as to not slow your video down, we're not going to be doing the right leg as well. However, always in clinical practice, we want you to compare both sides to clarify your patient diagnosis. So here we go. We're going to start the test by bending our patient's knee to 90 degrees. And then we're going to have our knee joint lightly resting on the posterior distal thigh. And the reason for this is to stop any hip movement. Now the Apley's test consists of two components. The first is the distraction and the second is the compression. Here's the distraction. So we're going to have both of our hands in a C shape with the fingers interlocked and the thumbs uh, interlocked at the back. Uh, we're not going to grip too hard, we're just going to keep it nice and soft so that we don't irritate our patient by gripping too hard. From there, we're going to distract the tibia relative to the knee joint by pulling up with our hands. So we're going to go up in this movement here. Then we're going to internally and externally rotate the tibia on the knee joint. And we're going to ask our patient, how does that feel? We're looking to see if it's particularly painful to them. That's the distraction component. Then we're going to do the compression component. Now for this one, we're going to rest our hands gently on the top of our patient's foot with the fingers around the calcaneus. Again, we're not going to grip too hard. We're just going to have them lightly pressing there. From there, we're going to now push down um, so that we're actually pushing our patient's tibia down against the uh, femur so that we get compression of the meniscus. From here, we then again internally rotate and externally rotate the tibia. And again, we're going to ask our patient how it feels. So that is the test. Distraction, lift up, externally, internally rotate. We then do the compression, push down, internally, externally rotate. So what is a positive result in this test? Well, if we're focusing on the meniscal part of things, if your patient has reduced pain on tibial rotation in the distraction part of the test, but then increased pain with tibial rotation on the compression part of the test, then that would be a positive result for a meniscal lesion. And the reason for that is because when we're in the distraction part of the test, the um, meniscus is not being compressed down, so the rotation doesn't affect it so much. But during the compression part of things, we're really squeezing the meniscus, and if there's a tear, then we're really grinding um, that tear out. And so that is why the test would be positive for pain with compression. It's also uh, important to mention a clunk. So if you get a clunk with the compression, but you don't get a clunk with the distraction, then that can also be a positive sign for a meniscal lesion. Now, there's just one more thing to mention, which is about the ligamentous side of things. We mentioned that you can uh, use the test to detect for ligamentous injury. And this is where the distraction part comes into it as well. So let's say we distract our patient's uh, left leg, and then we're rotating it, and we think, oh, there's quite a lot of movement there. And then we test the right leg, and there's not as much movement there. Well, that might tell us that there is a ligamentous injury on the left side because the ligaments should be preventing excess movement when we rotate. So if there's a lot more movement, that may give you an indication that your, pen, your patient has a ligamentous injury.